Ooh, what they know about it, huh? What they know about it? Uploads back to back, uploads, huh? Back to back, uploads back to back, huh? What they know about it, huh? If y'all ain't see yesterday's upload, head on over to yesterday's upload and then come back, all right? I'm gonna actually drop your like first, then come back. What's goody? Welcome back. Hope everybody's staying safe. Y'all keeping your look. I'm not gonna tell you again. Keep your mask on. But today I'm starting a series. Something really new to my channel. Something I should have been doing, or well, I've been thinking about for a long time. But got into the point where uh, either I should be competing or I should be helping people. Because honestly, I'm just sitting in sweat lobbies all day. I'm cooking everybody in these lobbies. Nobody's touching me. All right, unless you a pro called goody player or a sweaty M that's that's really been grinding every single day. Y'all not touching me. Nah, all ego aside, guys, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely trying to help you guys out and um, getting better at Call of Duty because um, I'm seeing a lot of campers and I'm tired of it. So I need more people who actually know how to play. No, I'm just kidding, guys. Seriously, though, I really want to help you guys get better, um, especially for my friends especially for people who feel like they can improve and don't know how to. These videos are gonna be for everybody, whether you're good at Call of Duty, whether you're decent, whether you know what you're doing, whether you kinda know what you're doing, there's some, there's something in here that you're gonna find that you didn't know. I'm dropping real gems in my videos, guys. I even have some friends that I hooked them up with some gems. They were pretty good at Call of Duty already, but there was some stuff they didn't even know about Cold War. So today's episode, we're starting with the settings. It's gonna be more of a beginner, mainly for beginners I'm gonna be catering to in this video. Then we're gonna start moving up. It's gonna be more stuff for everybody. But right now we're going into the settings. So if you're a controller player, which most of you are, the two most important settings are the sensitivity and the button layout, all right? Your sensitivity is going to basically, it's gonna be all on you, but your sensitivity should definitely reflect your play style. The sensitivity is the one that really changes the most. All of my settings that I have here, they don't change. They stay the same throughout every Call of Duty. Uh, they might change, you know, in the beginning when the game first drops, but other than that, these game, these settings that I have in Cold War do not change ever only thing that changes is maybe my sensitivity i'll cycle between 12 and 14 which is the max now i'm not recommending if you're just starting off or you're just still learning the ropes to go to no 14 sensitivity that takes a lot of time and i've been playing on max since for about two three years now but with your sensitivity when you learn your sensitivity you want to play some bots all right just just kill you drop your pride play against some bots all right play a private match shoot around see and take in data okay take in like what what does it feel like when you're using a certain certain sensitivity does it feel like people are moving too fast obviously bots don't have no movement no crazy movement but i will recommend guys if you're playing black ops cold war do not have a low sensitivity like two three four five i would say be the lowest okay five is six uh, pro players and, and high high level competitive players will play like five, six. The movement is really fast in Cold War, guys. The aim assist is there, but the movement is so fast. Like people run fast, people slide, people jump. The jumping is fast and far. The game is really fast paced. So you wanna be able to like keep up with people moving around and sliding and moving past you. So play some, some private matches, play a couple, you know, regular matches, collect data in your head and figure out what it feels like. Does it feel like you're going, you know, you're not moving fast enough, you're not turning fast enough and keeping up with people, or does it feel like you're too fast and you can't stay on target? There's a lot of other things that go into it, but those are the two main things you wanna think about once you pick your sensitivity. Since I have my sensitivity on max, I like to keep my ADS low zoom at 0 0.8. So it's when you're using any regular gun, four times magnification or lower. So like an ACOG scope, you know, um, you know the regular, the regular little scopes um, or anything regular to iron sights, red dots, that's what this is. All right, I keep it on 0.8 because it's a little bit slower. So I'm able to like turn fast with my max sensitivity, but still stay on target while I'm aiming down sight. My high zoom, that's when you're using a sniper rifle, anything, a thermal scope, anything that really zooms in far, that's that's what that's gonna be for. I keep that on regular. Some really good snipers or people who, who snipe a lot will put that up to like 1.1, 1 1.2. 1 
anything above that because a lot of people will say that the scopes feel a little slower when you scope in uh the sensitivity feels slower i personally don't really mind the way it feels on default so i keep it like that now the button layout is one of the most important things like i said one of the two most important settings in my opinion i've been playing on tactical for like 10 plus years since i started playing call of duty guys tactical basically changes your uh changes your the function of your circle and your your right stick if you're on playstation it's circle if you're on xbox it's b so it flips those two settings in this game i don't know for the past couple of years i don't remember when they changed it back in the day it used to be a knife all you gotta do is knife somebody when you press you know when you melee once they changed it to you gotta hit two people two times you don't have time to be bashing people over the head with your gun and don't waste an attachment spot to make your melee damage any stronger all right please that's that's a waste of an attachment you don't really have time to be hitting people twice with your gun in the middle of you know the in the, in the middle of the action i would say it makes more sense to use r3 to crouch and prone that gives you a chance to crouch go up and down you know duck and stuff like that slide you press you click the button to slide laying down and being able to, to slide crouch and things like that with your right stick means you don't have to move anything it, it, it it'll improve your ability to to have better movement i'll go into the movement in a separate episode guys this right here is just for the sensitivity if you want to stay on default because you know that's what you're used to and you're comfortable i would really suggest trying something new guys if if you're looking for improvement try something new try tactical out trust me it's way better in my opinion i don't mess with lefty it's basically like the opposite lefty is pretty much like uh some of the some of the that you um you had you you charlie is a little weird i don't really think you guys will enjoy that either it's you got you aim and shoot on the same side which is not gonna help me in my opinion bumper jumper tactical looks like a really good one in my opinion i don't use it because i play claw okay so i play like this i shoot with my middle finger and i use my index finger on the right side to jump reload switch weapons uh melee things like that i don't really melee but I use my claw finger to, to handle all those functions. I've been playing like that for years, guys, so I'm pretty much used to it. It takes a lot to get used to. Some of the most elite gamers, uh, Call of Duty players, do play claw. Look at Skump. He plays claw. I will say that, but if you don't want to play claw, guys, um, and you want to have better movement, like be able to jump and stand and do things like that, crouch, you know, do a lot of things without taking your thumbs off the thumbstick, I would recommend your aim down sights and your shooting are on the R1, L1 or, or on Xbox, the bumpers. To jump, it's on your uh, L2 or left trigger. However, to use your tactical equipment, you have to press square or X on Xbox. So there is a trade-off. It's not like completely OP. It's not completely like the best solution, but it will help you if you want to have better movement. You don't want to play claw. You want to do, you know, more things. You want to be able to jump shot. It'll help you in that sense. Now stick and move is kind of similar. Uh, it'll help you with your movement. Um, but instead, in this case, your right stick, you click it in to jump. It'll also help you with jump shotting as well um i'm not a big fan of it because clicking to jump it kind of like will throw my aim off a little bit i don't i don't really i'm not really into that one but it's up to you guys bumper ping isn't really that effective it just allows you to ping things with your left trigger tactical ping the same thing just a tactical version and brawler really not useful in my opinion puts the ping on your right stick i do recommend if you're playing on controller to flip l2 and r2 flip these buttons back here okay it'll allow you to shoot with your bumpers so your l1 and r1 or left bumper right bumper on xbox and that is it's a lot snappier it allows you to like like shoot faster uh have you know snap uh shoot pistols faster um just things like that it's snappier it's, it's better than using the triggers in my opinion there's less like delay there's less um you have to go through to to shoot and aim your gun so my opinion you should flip um, if you don't want to it's fine but it, it really does help a lot i do not mess with invert vertical look i don't think you should either it'll be really confusing it literally makes this you move in the opposite direction of where your stick is going now your aim response curve type is totally on you now 
I snipe, okay? I mostly snipe. I use my regular guns too, but I'm able to like, you know, adjust. Um, as a sniper in this game, since there's barely any, literally like non-existent aim assist, you can argue all day if you want. There's barely any aim assist in this game for sniping. So linear basically means when you move your right stick, all right, it's gonna be a constant speed, no matter where you move your right stick, okay? No matter how far you move it, it's gonna be a constant speed. Okay, with sniping, that makes the most sense. So you can place your, your aim exactly where you want it. With standard aim assist, the basically, the, the less you move your stick, the less you really move. And the further you move your stick, the quicker your aim moves, if that makes sense. So if you're ba barely like twitching like this, you know, your aim's gonna barely move. But if you start moving out here, the, your aim's gonna move a lot faster. That's really up to you guys. A lot of people use standard because it's just the same thing. It's what they've been used to all, all, all these years in Call of Duty. Dynamic is the opposite of standard, basically. When you're barely moving your stick, it's gonna move your aim faster. And the further you move it out, it's gonna slow down, if that makes sense. So it's better for fine aim control if you're more of a, you know, like you really trust your aim and your your reflexes and you want to stay on target and make these little fine adjustments it's going to move your aim a lot faster with the the minor movements but at the further you drag your stick out it'll slow it down okay that's not really good for sniping because if you need a quick twitch it's going to move you like really far and the further you try to drag it's going to slow you it's going to you're going to turn slower so like I said, for me, sniping, it's linear because anywhere I move my stick, it's exactly gonna do that on the screen. So that's totally up to you guys, what you wanna pick. Obviously it's all trial and error. You guys have to figure that out. Controller vibration, I suggest turning it off. Uh, I know I don't know if you guys get a kick out of it, vibration, but vibration really like just adds too much. Sublit like in your head, you don't really notice it, but it just adds too much to like subconsciously too much to, to your hands and too much to your aim. It's, you know, the controller shakes, your aim is gonna be affected by it. It's always gonna be affected by it, trust me. It's gonna be better to keep controller vibration off. Plus it'll save your controller battery life. If you're on PlayStation 5 with the DualSense trigger effect, Trust me, in multiplayer, it's not, it's not, it's not a fun thing to use. Like maybe in zombies, it's fun, it's cool, it's very, you know, it's very new, it's next gen. But trust me, it's not gonna help you in Call of Duty. So if you're not using PS5, don't worry about that. Aim down side assist, that's totally up to you. It doesn't affect you in multiplayer. It only works in zombies. So like when you aim down a sight, it'll literally snap your gun, like aim by onto a zombie or, or an enemy in campaign. So it does not work in multiplayer guys. So that's totally up to you if you want to turn that on or off. Slow down and, and strafing aim assist though, that is for multiplayer. So I, you're gonna need that, keep that on. If you're using controller, please don't play without it guys. You're gonna need it. It helps you stay on target when you're aiming in and when you're strafing, when you're moving while aiming, it's gonna slow you down and keep you on target. You're gonna need that for, for multiplayer or else you're just not gonna compete. Airborne mental, mental behavior. I have mine on mental, uh, on manual. So the difference between automatic is literally like when you're running to something, you'll literally jump through, jump through a window, like climb on top of it, go over it. That's, that's automatic. I don't really recommend having automatic on because it's gonna affect you in situations and gunfights and, and it's gonna happen unexpectedly. You're gonna mental, it's gonna throw you off, throw your aim off, you're not gonna expect it and you're gonna end up dying. So I put mine on manual and I put it on press. That that means like, you know, if I wanna go through a window, I just gotta click, click the button to go through. Um, you can put it on second press which means you have to like literally double press to mantle over something, which um, it'll help you in instances where you're like on a head glitch or you're taking cover behind something and you wanna jump, um, you won't end up climbing over the thing, you'll just jump. Um, and you'll have to double press the jump button uh, for it to mantle you over. I personally just keep it on, on press because I know how to control myself and not jump on a head glitch. That that doesn't make sense. Aim down sight behavior. You should hold it. That's that's regular guys. That's regular Call of Duty. Steady aim behavior. That's when you hold your breath while sniping. It'll stop your scope from drifting for the the amount of time. I think it's like five seconds or something like that. It's up to you. I haven't tried toggle yet. I might see if it helps. If it um, helps me with sniping, it might be cool. Not gonna lie, I might check test this out, but that's totally up to you. Armor behavior, I would suggest putting it on seven if you guys play, um, 
if you guys play fire team dirty bomb i would suggest putting it keeping it on apply one if you apply all and you press the button it'll literally start putting all your armor on and if somebody comes up unexpectedly while you're doing that you're not going to be able to get your gun up and kill them you're going to be stuck putting all your armor on now the left stick and right stick minimum input put threshold this is going to be your dead zone so this is going to be the amount of movement you have to do with your sticks for you know it to show up on the screen so the higher it is right say your dead zone is all the way up to 50 right that means you're literally gonna have to move your stick all the way like all the way over here for your aim to start turning that's not good that's literally gonna cause you to die guys so the lower it is the less you have to move the more like fine quick twitchy adjustments you can do so i would say experiment with this i keep mine on five which is close to the lowest um five is pretty good it's close to what i used in in warzone and modern warfare um if you have stick drift which is when your your controller is like causing you to turn and move without you touching it i would suggest bumping that up until it, it finally stops but trying to keep it as low as possible so that way you can control your um like find control your aim more that applies with the left stick and the right stick i keep them both on five left stick isn't as important to me unless you have stick drift which is going to cause you to move forward or move in any direction you should turn that up on your left stick as well but i keep them both on five which is pretty low which means like it's literally it feels like the lowest to me but i know it can go lower the max leave at 99 guys it's going to be confusing if you try to mess with the mac controller sounds i turn off on playstation this is for playstation the speaker on the controller i turn it off it's distracting there's no use for it i don't move forward i don't suggest turning this on this is gonna literally keep you running forward it's kind of like fortnite where you double click the stick forward and it'll just keep you running um in a straight line um i don't use this i don't really recommend it it's gonna kind of mess you up i feel like auto sprint i keep auto sprint on i don't know why um it was just just turned off but i just started playing with auto sprint guys so basically if you move your your left stick forward it's gonna make you start sprinting automatically so you don't have to keep clicking your stick your left stick is gonna like kind of tire your thumb out to sprint 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 all the time it's up to you but just know that every single time you move forward it's gonna make you sprint so I'm going to get into movement later, but it's up to you. If you guys aren't really used to that, I wouldn't suggest turning it on yet. So you guys get into better movement, which I'll do a video on real soon. So I keep that on, but it's up to you guys. If you want to test it out, you just have to get used to controlling that. Sprint cancels reload. I disable that because sometimes I need to reload and run and get out of situations while I'm reloading to get my gun ready for the next gunfight or to, you know, run, take cover while I'm and reload while i'm running and come back and challenge the guy i don't turn that on because if i sprint obviously i'm not gonna be able to reload i'm gonna have to stand still or walk to reload and that's gonna mess me up parachute auto deploy that's for fire team dirty bomb i do not turn that on because i like to get as close to the ground as possible before turning my parachute uh for opening my parachute same with warzone i had the same setting on interact reload behavior i keep mine on prioritize reload so if you want to pick something up, pick up a gun or pick up equipment, you just tap square one time with this setting. And But if you have to reload, it'll reload instead while you're standing over a gun or something. So I keep it on that, which is really useful. They didn't have this in Modern Warfare. So when I put it on contextual tap and I needed to reload, I was picking guns up all over the place. Don't know why they didn't have this simple setting in the game, but it's up to you guys. If you want to leave it normal, it's up to you guys. But... I put it on prioritize reload. It just makes it faster to, to pick something up and, and, you know, use things. Now let's move on to the graphics settings, guys. Um, it's not going to be the same if you guys don't have uh, PS5, but most of these are going to be the same. Safe area, you want it to be all the way up to, to what your console is set to. All right, you want it to be maxed to fit your screen, just like that. Field of view is important. If you guys don't know what field of view is, it basically can... It basically condenses your screen so you can see more of the map at all times so you can see more stuff the lower you have your field of view the less you can see now it's gonna be a little weird adjusting right uh, things are gonna look smaller it's gonna look like you're moving faster it's gonna look a little different I would say experiment with it guys it's gonna help you out if you have a higher field of view you're gonna see enemies 
that you wouldn't otherwise see if your field of view was lower. So basically a lower field of view, you have tunnel vision, the higher you can see more stuff. Stuff might look a little different and warped at first, but you'll get used to it, but it'll help you see enemies faster and things on your screen that you otherwise wouldn't see. I put mine on 99. I don't want it super high because it's just gonna feel weird and just, it's gonna be too much. Things are gonna look smaller. It's gonna be harder to aim. Um, so I leave mine at 99. It's like kind of the middle ground. The default is 80, I believe. Yeah, the default is 80. Be aware if you're on, uh, you know, previous gen or consoles that aren't that strong, the higher you put your field of view, supposedly it drops your frame rate. So just be aware of that and uh, be careful with that. You're gonna have to experiment and figure it out yourself. Field of view ADS. Um, I leave this on independent. It's gonna make your aim look a little different or smaller, or bigger, depending on what your field of view is. You're gonna, your hands and your guns are gonna look different. I leave it on independent because I like my guns looking regular. I like everything looking normal, what I'm used to. I don't like to change that, but it's up to you guys if you wanna put it on affected to make your, your basically your aim affected by your field of view. I leave it on independent. It's Dang guys, my light just turned off up there. So sorry about that, that weird lighting change in the video, but back to it. We're gonna finish this up. Motion blur, I would suggest turning it off. Motion blur is gonna mess you up. I mean, it's, it's just really ugly to look at it. The weapon motion blur is, or the self only motion blur is gonna make your hands and your weapons look kind of blurry the faster you move. Enabled is gonna make everything blurry when you move. It's kind of supposed to make it look realistic and smooth. In my opinion, it doesn't help. It makes it harder to see things. It makes me feel nauseated. I keep this off. You're gonna, your game's gonna look way better if you turn it off. Audio settings, I just have everything at default. Honestly, I'm just experiencing the game. I like to take everything in, but if you're in like competitive settings, I would say you could turn your music volume off. It doesn't help you out at all. It just makes it hard to hear things and matches. If you want to keep it on for the experience and the aesthetics, keep it on. Um, but if you want, turning it off will help you actually in matches. I leave my preset at um, Treyarch Mix. I would say uh, high boost does help as well um, with hearing footsteps and stuff. You do hear footsteps a lot better. Um, it's a different setting, but you should try those out. Hit marker sound effects I keep on. You want to hear the hit markers when it'll like help you kind of stay on target just like hearing the hit markers helps you know that you're hitting and if you're not hitting it like it gives you um, a confirmation really you want to keep your crosshairs on it's gonna it's the most one of the most important things in the game if you turn your crosshairs off you're not gonna know where your aim is really hit marker visuals i would suggest keeping that on it's gonna help you understand when you're getting a hit marker the visual aspect of it is gonna help you out trust me you're gonna, you should keep that on damage based hit markers as well it's gonna let you know if you killed somebody you're just gonna the more visual and audio cues that you get, the, the easier it is to just understand and move faster in the game. And I was, a lot of times if I kill somebody and I see the red hit marker and then I see a white one right after, that just tells me I hit somebody through the wall or somebody around the corner that I didn't see. I like health bars, up to you guys. I keep it on so I know if my teammates are getting shot at, if my teammates need help. I keep that on. Enemy health bars, I turn that on as well. It just gives me another cue on how weak somebody is. If I get a hit marker with a sniper, I should go challenge them. If I see somebody that's weak, I'll go challenge them. I'll jump out at them. I'll do that. Player names, I keep on. I just like the visual cue of it. But that's it, guys. That's it. That's the end of the video. Those are all the settings that I use. You should, I hope you guys took some um, great info from this video. Um, so you can guys adjust your settings if you're not getting that many kills that you need some work you need to fix things um, I suggest looking at this video watching all the way through Taking some of the tips tips that I put and experiment with all the settings to see what works the best That's definitely how you're gonna get better try new things don't stay in the same spot trust me I'm not gonna feed you guys a bunch of stuff that doesn't make sense Trust me, these are gems. These, this, these settings have been working for me. I'll show you guys gameplay in the future. You'll see I'm using everything that I'm showing you in this video is what I actually use. It's not BS. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna be, episode two is coming up real soon. 
probably tomorrow. I'm gonna try daily uploads. I'm trying to try to put these out as fast as possible so there's no gap, so you guys aren't waiting. The faster I put these out, the faster you guys can watch and learn things and get better. So episode two will be about will be coming up hopefully tomorrow episode two will be about centering and getting you know your aim together and winning more gunfights that will be coming out right after this i'm gonna try to get these out as fast as possible if you did guys did enjoy these videos drop a like if you think this information is helpful and you're ready for the future videos you want me to do more of these you want me to do episode two drop a like let me know down below as well drop a comment let me know if these are if there's any gems in here anything that helped you guys out let me know down below. Subscribe for more Call of Duty content. If you don't subscribe, you're gonna miss out on the future videos of this series. You're gonna miss out on all the gems I'm about to drop. I'm giving y'all stuff that people are not gonna give you. Turn on that bell for post notifications so you can know when the next video and the next episode is dropping. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Be easy. Bye,